this is the new Wellhouse Lux XL. XL because it's a long wheelbase, Lux because it's got the luxury of a high top fitted. There are two types of high top available. This one has the extra high top, but there's also a standard roof one, which we'll show you later in the video. There's also two interior layouts. You can have four travel seats with two single beds in the rear, or you can have a side settee layout in place of the rear travel seat. They also have a different kitchen layout and a slightly different washroom layout. So we'll show you that when we go inside. Things are a bit different inside this van. As you can see, you've got these two rear travel seats uh, with this particular option, and these fold down into two single beds. I'll show you. So you just unscrew the knob at the base, and then just pull the whole thing forward. And as you can see, it simply slides down to make a bed. If you rotate the uh, swivel cab seat, you get a longer uh, bed layout too. But as it is, I'm 6'2", excuse the shoes, and there's an infill piece here that can be removed too. Uh, I've got plenty of room. And it's a nice flat bed. Um, it's well padded too. The other point is, although they do a separate side settee model, well, with a few scatter cushions here, you've got a side settee. So I think this is quite a good all-round option if you want to have one van but two benefits. The other big advantage to having a high top is obviously the height. This is the extra high one, but uh, I'll show you this on another camera. But as you can see, or not see, I can stand up and I had several inches clear at the top of my head. The advantage with a high top is when you arrive on the campsite, there's no setting up. You literally just turn the ignition off if you want to set up the bed or settee, as we have done here, how long did that take? 10 seconds? So it's very quick to set up uh, for the night. And conveniently, Wellhouse have also put the fridge close to hand. So that's always good for grabbing a cold drink after a long drive. The other points to make about high tops is, because the roof isn't canvas, it's better insulated. So for all year use and in winter, they tend to be a better option and warmer. Added to that, although you don't get a roof bed in them, so they can only sleep two, instead of a roof bed, you have lockers fringing the roof, including quite a deep one above the cab, which is great for bedding, table legs, that kind of thing. Plus, two deep lockers on either side of the roof, great for all your touring kit. And the other point to make about having storage in the roof is if you've got a bed made up, it doesn't affect the access to the storage at all. You can still get to the lockers no matter what the layout is downstairs. So it's very easy to live with. For longer term touring or perhaps a, a, an extensive trip to Europe, this would be an ideal vehicle to take with you. The other feature you get, which is quite unusual in medium sized camper vans, is you get a nice skylight. So that's a really good feature to have, particularly if you're going somewhere hot or you just want to vent out a bit of heat during summer. Also, you get the fly screen blind with it and the nighttime blinds. So, good to have. If you go for the optional two travel seat model, the rear seats are replaced by a side settee and at nighttime, this forms a spacious double bed which also benefits from having a deep storage locker beneath it. With both cab seats swivelled around, you get a really sociable lounge. And it's also very convenient for setting up the table. It's just a freestanding version. So pop the legs down, stick the pole in the hole, and it couldn't really be much easier to set up the dining table so yeah really good simple layout with both cab seats swiveled there's a convenient dining table for this side that can go in all sorts of uh, different positions depending on where you want it 
or you can have a sort of a drinks hatch outside. I'll just leave it out of the way as I'm swiveling the seat back. It's always good to have a vehicle you can put your feet up on. This is a really good sociable layout for a camper van and it'd be great to entertain friends on a campsite in this space or just put your feet up and watch a film. It's quite nice being able to walk through at full height uh, into the kitchen area. I can stand up to cook here if I want, you just can't see my head. Or you can sit down to cook, which is a real plus point to this layout. Under these cabinets, you've got drawer storage. This one folds down, as well as a locker deep down. Gas oven and grill and a 40 litre compressor fridge. The switch for which is up here. You've got lighting switches on this panel here, as well as USB points, a 230 volt socket, and lots of really good storage for foodstuffs. All dried foodstuffs can go in here, spices can go in these racks, and there's even an overhead locker for extra stuff and a shelved unit at the back another locker above the loo area. The washroom itself can be cut off with a slide across screen. So that just goes across there for a bit of privacy. The loo itself simply folds up. There's a little cap that just holds it in place. And then it's the normal bench cassette loo. The cassette for the loo is handily placed behind this hatch so no holes have been cut in the bodywork. You can also get an outdoor shower point fitted as an optional extra. So it has a real upmarket feel to it and I particularly like the fact that you can cook while sat down. This is the lazy person's camper van, I like it. So yeah really good to have a separate private room at the back that also doubles as a kitchen. Really good use of space. This particular model has the barn doors at the rear, but you can opt for a lift up tailgate if you prefer, but it's nice to have the choice. It doesn't affect the layout greatly in any way. There are pros and cons. Obviously the lift up tailgate gives you shelter from rain and a bit of a sunshade, but the barn doors don't require as much room behind the van to open, so they're easy to open if you're parked somewhere. But the pros and cons, and you have the choice. This is the extra high top version, which uses a fiberglass roof to extend the interior height of the Transit Custom. But you can also get the 2.4 metre tall normal high top version, which uses Ford's original steel roof. Inside the Lux, it's quite a pleasant place to be. It's based on the Limited model and you have a few bells and whistles as standard. This particular one has a leather steering wheel, automatic gearbox and the large touchscreen controls. I'll just boot it up and see if it's got sat-nav. I don't think it has. Some do. You can get sat-nav uh, as an option but it's worth noting that because your mobile phone syncs with it, you can use the app on your mobile phone for the sat-nav, so it's not the be-all and end-all. Armrests are standard. Um, really good, comfortable, ergonomic layout. The Fords are very good um, since they were revised with the uh, better heater control layout and the uh, touchscreen display. So, yeah, we'll just fire it up. The dials do a nice little dance. You've got various controls on the steering wheel. So on the left hand side, you've got controls for the cruise control, audio settings, whereas on the right hand side, it's the controls for the computer uh, settings, the, the information system. There's also controls on the right for answering and ending calls via Bluetooth. So yeah, has all you need, very plush place to be. The standard Ford seats are really good and comfortable, so together with the comfortable two rear travel seats, there'd be no problem doing long distances in this vehicle. It'd be ideal for touring Europe, it really would. The standard engine is 130 PS, but you can upgrade to 170 PS as well if you'd prefer. And you can have an automatic or manual gearbox in most models. The other point that's worth mentioning, I'll just fire it up so you can see it working, 
is, as with many Fords, it comes with a quick clear windscreen, which is brilliant. One of the best features. No more de-icing windscreens in winter. Just push a button and it starts to work. It literally takes minutes to clear your windscreen and you don't even have to step out of the vehicle. That's a real plus point for a vehicle you can use all year round. The heated front seat option is also great for all year use. While practical features like the twin 12 volt sockets and twin USB points make it really practical. One thing that's good on this particular model is it's fitted with a tow bar. But look how easy it is to reverse onto a trailer if you're towing a trailer. And look how great a view you get from the rear view camera. Really useful that, very easy to live with. If you're thinking of using one of these for motorsport, particularly good. There's even a dedicated button to switch off the reversing sensors so they don't bleep when you're backing up with a trailer.